Star-Lord has quickly risen to being one of Marvel's most popular heroes thanks to his role in Guardians of the Galaxy. But just a few years ago, barely anyone, even comic book fans, knew who he was. His newer fans might be surprised to discover that he's kind of a galactic jerk, even though the Marvel Cinematic Universe made him look more like Han Solo than Boba Fett. Here's the dark side of Star-Lord you never knew about. He brainwashed the Guardians The modern Guardians consist of some of the universe's best warriors, but also some of its most notorious loners. How did Quill convince everyone to join the team? He had another team member, Mantis, brainwash all of them to think it was a good idea. Even worse, he didn't even try asking first, he just went straight to brainwashing. Forcing people to do something they normally wouldn't do is like the textbook definition of being a villain, so good job, Star-Lord, you creep. That time he rescued Thanos As the big bad guy of the Marvel Universe, Thanos once killed half of all life, not just on Earth, but literally everywhere simply because he could. He also has a crush on the female embodiment of death. Not this one, or this one, but this one. Everyone has a type. During Marvel's Thanos Imperative story, Star-Lord and Nova sacrifice themselves to help trap Thanos in another universe because that's the heroic thing to do. But while Nova makes good on the self-sacrifice, Star-Lord finds a way out and brings Thanos with him. Star-Lord's truce with Thanos brings the universe's worst villain back into action, and that just seems like another creepy villain thing to do. He caused Annihilation Conquest In the Marvel comic universe, the first Annihilation War basically broke the galaxy, but it never would have happened if it wasn't for Star-Lord. He had invited a group of Space Knights to come update the Kree homeworld security systems, but the Space Knights had already been infected by the Phalanx. For those who don't know, the Phalanx are basically Marvel's version of the Borg, and at the time, they'd actually been taken over by Ultron. One thing leads to another, and the entire universe is almost assimilated into the Phalanx consciousness, all because Star-Lord thought the Space Knights were cool. Which they aren't. Just look at this guy! He's like a heroic trash can or something. No thanks. He endangered Earth. Earth. It's primitive and weak. Different alien species are always trying to invade it, and the planet always just barely survives. That being the case, it's not a good idea to put the planet in extra danger, but Star-Lord didn't read the memo. In the comics, his father, the ruler of the planet Spartax, basically puts a target on the Earth, unless Peter returns to the Spartax Empire as a member of the royal family. That doesn't sound so bad, does it? But of course, in true Star-Lord fashion, he doesn't just immediately slip into a life of royal intergalactic luxury. Instead, he puts all of his friends and family in danger. To be fair, Peter's dad Jason isn't exactly the nicest guy. Eventually, Star-Lord helps remove his father from the throne, but then he just leaves, so it surprises him when Spartax elects him to be their next leader. Since he's the heir to the throne and also the Empire's big hero, this should have been obvious. But instead of fulfilling his duties, Quill tries to just abandon his people. That life of luxury must be a real heavy burden. And when he finally did take the throne later on, he did such a bad job that his people ousted him. Oh well. He was a lounge singer. When all of reality crashes together during Marvel's Secret Wars, a small contingent of heroes survive the end of the world on a lifeboat built by Reed Richards. When they land on the patchwork planet of Battleworld, Star-Lord finds himself in an alternate version of Manhattan. Instead of getting back into the hero game, he works as a lounge singer until he meets up with an alternate version of Kitty Pride. He finds his way back to the Resistance to help lead the charge against God Doom, the ruler of Battleworld, but he'd probably still be singing if he never run into an actual hero. Speaking of which, he's insanely jealous. Peter Quill and Kitty Pride were the it couple of the Marvel Comics universe for a bit. But their relationship took a turn for the worse when Star-Lord decided to step up and become the leader of Spartax, prompting Kitty to take up his old mantle as the new Star-Lord. Peter didn't like having another, more effective Star-Lord kicking around the galaxy, and the two had a fairly messy breakup before reconciling. Maturity has never been one of Quill's strong suits. What are you doing? I'm distracting you, you big turd blossom. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.